Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. It is a weekly chat about socially conscious topics impacting the culture. On this episode, we are joined by Simbaza, host and creator of the Simbaza Podcast. Hey guys, so welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. Today, we have our most favorite co-host, Sam Baza. He is a two-time nominee for Best African Diasporan Podcast by the APBA, and he is from the Republic of Kenya in East Africa. He has been a presenter at the Afros Audio Podcast Festival discussing Pan-Africanism, and he is slated to be an ambassador for the 2024 Afros and Audio Podcast Festival. Welcome, Simbaza. Thank you, Jen. I'm glad to be here for another day. Yeah. Oh, uh, we went ahead and let the intro play. We haven't played that in a while. So, <laughs> so a shout out to Dripping in Black Productions. Okay, so how's it going, Sabaza? Oh, it's good. That's why you saw me. I was busy grooving by the time it started. But... <laughs> that, that's a nice intro. Yeah, thank you. We worked hard on that. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. So um, today we're going to do things a little different. We did have a different show planned for you, but um, we will pivot and move accordingly. Uh, we did want to, in the uh, last couple of episodes, we have been acknowledging mental health awareness. And so we're going to uh, just do a little uh, mini recap of our last three episodes covering that subject matter. And then you, if you guys have questions and so on, please um, drop that in the chat. And we'll be glad to address that with you guys. So let's see. So on, um, and really this is, has been like a series um, covering the mental health awareness episodes and autism. We've actually having another autism episode and mindset episode plan. Really excited about that. Um, thoughts about that before we uh, talk about the first uh, mental health episode. This uh, has been really interesting because see, we actually, we've been interchanging them back and forth. Uh, but uh, I think, the fact that we're tackling the issue of mental health is really awesome. And I am, I'm happy to kind of get into the subject because some of these things, we look at them as taboo. And mm -hmm. uh, this was shining some light on it and make people understand that it, it's normal. Some things are just normal. We, we need to normalize it and not look at it as some something that is, uh, like I said, a taboo. Right. Like uh, we on the last recap, we talked about uh, episodes where we had uh, Miss Denise Moore. It's destigmatizing mental health because it is a stigma. That's what, yeah, it, it, there really is a stigma with getting help. And, you know, like we talked about with Paula last episode, what stays in this house, you keep it in this house, all these things we kind of grew up with. And that is keeping us from addressing things that are, you know, are really, you know, driving us mad or preventing us from being our greater selves, you know? And also, you know, Paula was also give us some little bit of information, but we'll get into it that. Which one mm -hmm. do you want to start off with? Yeah. So picking up where we left off, uh, episode 156 was our, uh, I guess, initial autism awareness episode. We had the Bond Billions join us and that was really great we had a uh a couple of uh parents mr and mr von villian join us from louisiana who have a young child with autism and so they shared about what they have been experiencing from the the point of you know get trying to get that diagnosis to um, seeking therapy and resources that could help with communication. And I guess I'll let you share on that before we get further along in that. Oh, yeah. It was one of the, I think, the longest episodes we've done together. Okay. Uh, but when you look at it, it had all the content that needed to, to be, you know, we needed to have it long. The Bone Villains really poured out their, their story. And they talked about, you know, everything that we needed to know. They want, they want, uh, you know, they want to let people not know what was there. And we appreciate that. Uh, 
some people, and like I said, some people find this subject so hard to talk about. Therefore, when it's one of those situations, you will not get enough information about it. it people might be dangling around a circle and not want to tell you what you really need to know. But mm -hmm. they really poured this out on that. And um, I kind of liked it at the end when they, when they really stayed about their toddler, their son, about how mm -hmm. much of a good he is. And you really felt it from their heart. It was right, you know, the, the, you could feel that it was coming right down from their heart about this, their, their, their toddler. Definitely. And I guess I wasn't prepared for, you know, the emotional part of that conversation. And I know, you know, this is a very serious matter. Um, people are dealing with things that are difficult. Uh, you know, having autism is, you know, no walk in the park. You know, the people, it, affects it affects people differently you know that's where you know that terminology being on the spectrum you know there's different parts of the development that is impacted and and then we talk about um we'll get into that last episode to kind of tie um to demonstrate and tie in with that you know it impacting people differently you know but to hear um, a mother, you know, say that she was mourning the childhood that her son would not have being a child with autism versus a child that does not have autism, you know, really struck a chord and it, you know, just, it just kind of broke my heart a little bit. And so, um, you know, not to, I guess I felt, um, felt for what they're going in, you know, getting the information and, guidance that they they you know that they were seeking because they shared that all right and i think with the kind of information she has looked into to all the other uh locations that she needed to get uh information she needed that, that actually made everything seem to be all right like they were going to be all right most of the times when somebody approaches you they usually have a problem of there's not enough information out there you know, they'll complain that there's not enough information. What I noticed that they had hope and they were go-getters. So they were looking for it, looking for the information and went after the information and look at wh where they are now. Now, it's not that they have 100%, but this is a matter of trying. You keep trying and trying and trying and trying. Um, they never stop. And that's what uh, I think they also told us about uh, new parents. We asked them about new parents and they said, you have to try. You, you don't give up. They're good and they're bad. But the whole point is, at the end of the day, you just got to keep trying. Totally. That was definitely a takeaway from the Bobillions that they were, you know, determined to, you know, seek help and guidance and do everything that they could so that their son could thrive. And I was, you know, really touched by that. Um, the fact that she was an educator and shared that, you know, she recognized signs of the developmental uh, process not being where it should be, um, you know, based on age and um, the normal growth of um, a young person. And so um, I was definitely touched by that. And it was really clear that they were determined um, you know, to, you know, make sure that their trial, child thrives. And I wanted to make sure that that point came across, which I think it did, is that even though your child may be on the spectrum or you may have a child that has autism, um, your child can still thrive. Your child can still have a great childhood. You know, they still have memories and you can have those special moments um, with them. You know, they learn differently. They communicate differently. And I just wanted to make sure that we, um, or that message got you know, tra translated in the episode. And I think it really did. I really, with their story. It did. It did very well. I, was it another takeaway? Uh, you, you know, when you look at Nikki, the, um, the dad also, he also spoke on the, on the side of uh, men. The way, as men, we also 
feel like we lost, like even the, the part where you say the childhood. And we also, I also wanted to get his part because, you know, uh, us men usually have this idea of it's going to be all right. But then there's also that resistance. Now, notice in the story that the doctor said he's, the boy was just being a boy. And these are men who are on that. It's like for us men, we have some type of thinking. We, it doesn't sink in really quickly. That's kind of what I, what I got from, and I know I'm that way. I'll be honest with you. I'm that way. It does take a while to sink in. I, things will come up and I'll t- it'll take me a while. So I could relate to him. And then when you talk about the doctors telling the child that he, this child is still growing, he's still a child. Yet the mother is telling you, you know, there's something wrong here. Let's look into it. So I get that. We're all human. Um, I guess the male, the male species is a different species altogether. That's a good point. That's a good point. So um, who, who next? Who do we go to next? Uh, the next one was Paula, right? It was 150A with Paula. Sima? Paula Sila, Sima Mula Mula, the government child, as, as someone called. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that was an inside joke. However, uh, Paula was talking about her, her life. Uh, and uh, since it was mental awareness, she was trying to express how people should feel and how people should take people with mental illness. This is where we have to provide, and she, she said this, uh, you provide a safe space for somebody who has mental health. Because if you don't have a place where you feel safe to talk about your problems, then the situation is not working. Uh, a lot has to do with how you communicate with the person, tell them, hey, this is, this is a safe space. But then you have to make them feel comfortable. You have to make them feel like, okay, if I say something here, it's not going to be looked at as, oh, this is weird. Oh, this is what. So her podcast makes sure that everyone, when they get there and they are talking about themselves, they are comfortable. They feel free. True. And to clarify, uh, Paul's podcast is called Talk S H I T. What is it? Sabaza? Uh, uh, you know, you get me say that. <laughs> Talk you should be. There you go. So that is the name right. of her podcast. But I love how she shared, you know, the motivation of wanting to or creating the podcast. And so she, you know, was looking for, you know, a medium, a platform for someone dealing with depression, that dealing with, uh, you know, having these feelings and you want to talk with someone else who knows what you're going through. And she didn't see that out there. So she created her own. And I love that idea. Um, and I hope that that message, you know, radiates through um, this broadcast is that, you know, if you're not seeing something that you're seeking, create it for yourself. And I think that's a great message. And I love that she shared that. And I really feel like you can apply that to so many different things. So and I like also that she rebranded from the, the used to bring everyone on the show. And then she took off that part. And after she figured out where or the direction of her podcast, she started bringing the creatives. Because as creatives, mm-hmm. um, and she said very well, you are out there, you see somebody and you're, you're like, wow, he's having a good life. He's having it all. But these are real people. What you see is on stage. That's a different persona. And mm-hmm. they're having at the back, when they, leave the, when they leave all those cameras and what have you, like even here, we are podcasters. But who knows when I leave here, I have a totally different life. It's not the same life. So Paula explained that. So she got the creatives to be able to express themselves so that you, when you look at them, you're like, it's normal for a creative to have, uh, uh, you know, have, I don't want to say issues, but have challenges. That's an appreciate word, challenges in their lives in terms of their mental health and, uh, you know, 
uh, emotional intelligence and everything. So right. shout out to Paula for looking at a different niche and trying to explore that because also some of these things have been explored by other people. Mm-hmm. So when you're also podcasting, you can try to make your, your own your own niche and I think it works now. It does. That's why I love having creatives on because we all kind of do this process and navigate differently. And it's kind of cool to get other people's perspective that, you know, you kind of navigate or you got started this way and then you pivot and you did some things like she said, she's going to bring back, you know, another component of her platform that she kind of used to do before. Um, Do you recall the name of it? Which one? The company? No, it's, I guess, something, I guess her in-city, live in the city meetups or something like that that yeah. she's doing. Yeah. yeah, Atlanta. She's coming with the meetups in Atlanta as well because she said she's, uh, people are mostly on the screen, that, you know, aftermath of COVID. But now she wants to create uh, the meetups that they used to have and kind of meet up people. And that's also another way of, um, you know, communicating. Human beings are not meant to be, caged up somewhere in a hole even though some people are comfortable with that but you want to get out there and have some sort of social life with people seeing and touch is also one of the things a human element true true and it's interesting that you know a lot of people started their podcast during the pandemic you know even (laughs) and me too It's just one of those things that um, happen, but a lot of those podcasts have fell by the wayside too, which, you know, we've had conversations about that in a lot of our podcast circles that um, there's pod fave, but I think the ones that have stayed the course, you know, have pivoted in a way just with the changes of life and everything, you know. And Paula's is a good example Mm -hmm. because your mental health is very broad and which is what I'm learning. You see, that's one thing people should also realize. When you come to watch one episode and then we bring another person, you don't expect the same thing that's going to happen. You're going to see two different people expressing two different uh, views or angles. And that's the beauty of this because what Paula brought and st- talked about herself is totally different from what we got next. Right. And yeah, it just, totally different you know different uh, customer brings you a different you know different customer different podcast guest brings you a different experience yes and then i'm like that and i'm just kind of reflecting back on the episode with paula sima mula mula who was a guest on the um I guess what was that 157 episode 157 she shared that you know we kind of had a conversation about what to look out for if someone is dealing with you know going through something you know they're going through and, and you kind of want to be present what can you identify in the behavior and she said maybe someone who you know, we're posting all the time and then they stop or, you know, they were, you know, always going out to eat or, you know, you see them eating and then all of a sudden they're not eating like normal, you know, just a really cut change in that behavior. I thought was a really good um, call out that she shared to notice in, you know, your friends um, who may be experiencing tough times. And, you know, I can, you know, speak to that having recently, you know, went through a major loss in my life. You know, I lost my mom in January and I've tried to, I guess, personally stay busy so that, I mean, but I don't (laughs) really probably haven't like officially dealt with it in like the true way that a person should, but I just try to stay busy. Is there a true way of dealing with the loss? You know, you have the. I think the the way you should say it is you deal with the loss according to the way you feel you're gonna, uh, uh, you know, get the, get to go through it. You know, people have different have different ways of going through losses. So yeah. you know, do it do it your way. Like I, it took me over a year to accept that my mom had passed on and. Uh, that was, and I still talk to her as present. I don't talk to her as past. It's always present, 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 which is sometimes I, I, I'm getting used to it, you know, but it's, uh, in the beginning it was weird. But 
there are those adjustments. You, mm -hmm, you, you mm -hmm. take you take a while. It takes a while, and you know, just go through the go through the things you you need to go through. Well, um, also, yeah. uh, also there was this thing she talked about boundaries because I brought about mm -hmm. the situation where now somebody has issues, not issues. Somebody has challenges in their life, and you're the friend, and they keep they keep calling you. And it emotionally drains you as the person who's trying to help out. Mm -hmm. So when is it time to tell the person, hey, you know what? Enough is enough. I think you need to seek professional help. You know, I'm not that person that can give you that help because probably you're going to send that person. You're going to send me to, um, to therapy, you know, and I may need the therapy as well. But well, there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with therapy, right? But what right, I'm saying right. is, it can also drain the other person when you kind of constantly bombarding them with things, you know, like de depressing thoughts where you want to help out, but there has to be a boundary, create a boundary at some point and say, you know what, I'm your friend. We've gotten this part. I've helped you get to this part. But I think at this point in time, you want to get the medical attention because they're the ones who are good to or quick or able to assist you because as a person you know i don't have a qualification for for whatever job it is that you need i'm there as a friendly face that you can talk to and pour out all your 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 emotions and all what you feel but at some point there has to be uh there has to be uh yeah uh an end goal and what is the end goal? I can appreciate that um, for sure. You know, if with all of your relationships, I think it's um, a good idea to know internally what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with. And those things that you're not comfortable with, boundaries should be established and shared with the other party. So um, definitely agree with that thought. <laughs> and then we had Storm G. Yeah, so 158. Uh, yes, so we uh, brought in Mr. Stone G from Australia, who is a veteran counselor who um, counsels uh, individuals mostly who have autism. And he, you know, shared that he himself has autism and deals with it. And he has a podcast. So he's another content creator. We talked about how we, you know, love to connect with other content creators. So not only was he a content creator, but he was a, you know, licensed counselor who, um, who has autism, who, helps other people with on um, very passionate about helping others too i thought it was an excellent episode your thoughts on that one i noticed that when i went to his episodes most of those episodes of his it's, he's still on season one do contain a lot of the counselors who actually are autistic and they they know how to express themselves um i advised most of the people who and who are here right now by the way, don't forget to link, uh, to like and subscribe the show. Uh, if you go over to his podcast, Mind the Autism podcast, most of the people are counselors and they also have autism. They have some aspect of autism, except I think one guy who was from Israel. But that, that, that's another story for another day because, well, let me put it like this. They have this special program where they were using some drones to track something and they were using autistic people because they were really good to detail. And the, you want to go listen to the podcast because it was a long podcast. And I think it, I really can explain well because I only caught a little bit of it. However, um, I like the fact that he brought the, the people who also were on the spectrum themselves and they were. Oh, they had a safe space, especially the fact that, remember here, we're talking about safe spaces. They knew yes. that when they were in his, in his presence, it was a safe space and they could talk about their, their feelings and they could talk about their experiences, which made it more authentic and also more informative. Unlike some right. others where 
people would dance around the subject. So that was one of the best things I had. And Stone G is also African American. He was just born in Japan, mm-hmm. then he went to Australia, decided to live in Australia. And now, uh, well, he goes back and forth from France to Australia, okay. which makes it even, uh, which makes it even uh, interesting because you remember he talked about the uh, moving. And you know, when he's, so with his, with the way he is, and the, he says, you know, you, you're finding your being, he likes things to be in order. And just by the moving part of it, he had everything was out of order. So by the time I was coming to a podcast, he wasn't um, comfortable around his his surroundings, but he made sure he brought up a good podcast. And he gave us some very passionate and informative and also advice that we need to be using on our podcast, on our upcoming podcast as well. For sure. Um, this is definitely a great episode to check out. And I think I said the number incorrectly. It's actually 159. Um, the sequence got a little haywire. <laughs> so this is actually 158 that you're tuning in. And then that is 159. <laughs> Don't ask. So, but no. So, um, but no, he shared. I love how he, you know, we would ask him something about, you know, putting autis- autistic in front of it. And he just, you know, kind of pivot and, and, you know, he just pivot that question back. And it's like, you know, you're still a person, you know, he's, I'm a, I'm a black man, you know, I'm, I'm autistic. I have autism, you know? And so the fact that he had his autism basically does not limit him from thriving or learning or communicating or helping people or wanting to have a desire to help people or get whichever goals or, you know, and accomplishments that he seeks. And I thought that was excellent. Um, yeah. So you, you have a good point there because we never, we are not giving him justice when he explained how he talked about being, you know, you have to get yourself to be a person. Don't look at him on the spectrum. Just being on the spectrum is nothing to do with him. It's just, he's a person. Now talk about the person. Learn the Correct. person. Which right. was tied down back to the first one we had with the Bond villains when they were talking about mm-hmm. their, their toddler. It's like, you know, you look at him as he is. If you know him as he is and look at him as he is, minus whatever comes after that, you'll find that he's a normal person, only that he has his own world that we're not privy to, you know? True. But basically, we're all different. Like I said, you know, he will still have a childhood. It would just be different. You know, he'll still have memories and dreams and, you know, be able to accomplish things. I mean, you know, she shared that she was able to teach him American Sign Language. I mean, that is like, you know, impressive if not anything for someone who you know had struggles with communicating because you know everybody who has autism is not able to communicate as eloquently as Mr. Stone G and we know that but there's some there's different tools and techniques and you know concepts that can be shared American Sign Language you know what I mean he can hear but she taught him American Sign Language as another way that he can communicate and if he can, you know, understand and grab that concept, you know, like that is huge. That really is huge. So adaptation, the human, the human being is great at adapting. And that's where he picks up from. He says, OK, I cannot communicate verbally, but then I may be able to communicate with you via sign language. True. I mean, and, it just really. Yeah. Go ahead. And for the record, if you talk to him and say anything, he'll he he he, he understands anything you say. Just mm-hmm. that he'll, he'll use the sign language to to revert back and uh, have the conversation with you, or whatever you want to talk to him about. He'll to revert back to to sign language as a response. But okay. anything else you say, he understands. 
Yeah, and I for, you know almost forgot to mention that that you, um, Simbaza, shared the Bonvillians are part of your family village, and so I appreciate you being comfortable in sharing that with Walk by Accident and the listeners. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, and many more. For sure. And so, but um, yeah, so I think that was a great tie in. Uh, when you told me that you found the information for Stone G, I immediately thought that would be a great, you know, add on for this, you know, great body of work that we're completing here, um, you know, highlighting mental health awareness autism awareness, you know, someone as, you know, established as Mr. Stone G, you know, shows, you know, what can become of someone, you know, on the spectrum, a young person, you can thrive and then you can become successful, a business owner, you know, you can do whatever you want, you know. Did he also tie, did he try, did he make us understand where uh, mental health, like uh, seeking therapy? Mm-hmm. And also seeking therapy and autism. I don't know. There, there was some kind of um, it's kind of some kind of connection that he had. But he said that you know you don't need therapy to understand. You need to therapy probably to understand who you are, but you don't need therapy to make you. Did he say? I, I'm getting confused. Let me not give you guys wrong information. But hey. Okay. Just go back and listen to that podcast. Yeah, I think I follow. I think I yeah. follow you. He you follow what I'm saying, right? Mentioned being aware of yourself, you know, and right. that self accusate, you know, <laughs> uh, self, you know what I mean? <laughs> Actualization. Actualization. Yes. yes. You got it. <laughs> but no, definitely knowledge, you know, knowing yourself and understanding what you're, you know, that you need structure and those things help you understand and learn. And that's why, you know, schedule and things like that help you um, in your process. I think I figured it out. It was the fact that you don't need to be told what you are, but you need to be guided. Like exactly what you said, you need to be guided through the path that you're going through. Like for example, um, this is the path you want to take. Well, maybe you want to go to point A and point B, but you cannot go from point A to point B. You got to go to uh, A plus one on the side, stop here and then go there. And that's where a counselor comes in to guide you to move, you know, with the with therapy and tells you, okay. you know, they, they're like a guide. One of the one of the one of his shows, they talk about that as um when you are comfortable, and here again we go back, when you're comfortable, you have to be comfortable with the person that you're going to be looking, who's going to be teaching you these concepts. And mm-hmm. when they start teaching you, they, all they're doing is standing by you and holding your hand and guiding you and telling you, okay, this is the path, like, like the river. They use the analogy of a river. So that's uh, what I got from that particular episode. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for sharing that. And we encourage you guys to uh, take a look at our episodes on mental health awareness and autism. Uh, We're definitely proud of what we've completed and please uh, stay tuned, stay with us for what we have to come. We do have some additional um, perspectives and guests that we'll share on subject matter of autism and mindset. I'm really looking forward to that. So um, for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. There, there's yeah. a lot coming guys. There's a lot coming. This is just, it is. <laughs> we're just starting off. And this, you know, I was not planned, you know, this is kind of just organically developed. Um, Yeah. So I, you know, I appreciate your hand and effort because, you know, you got juggling a lot of plates (laughs) as we, I think as we all are. So um, yeah, but, you know, I, I really do enjoy uh, creating this content and sharing it with others. I feel like someone somewhere out there will, you know, find something useful and apply that. That is my hope. All right. Definitely there is. Uh, 
once it once it's out there, people will consume it. For sure. Um, and so we do have some additional episodes planned. I think they're even out there on YouTube where you can, you know, put it on your reminders or, and things like that. So, and... Are we going to do this? Okay, sure. Let's round it out <laughs> as we get ready to pivot. I, I, yes. <laughs> okay. You know, this is my favorite part. So which one are you doing? Red or the red or the green? Red or the green? Red pill or the green pill? Uh let's go green. All right, we're gonna go green. Okay. I'll give you only three questions. Does that mean I have to have questions for you? Oh, nah. I'll let you Maybe chat. one. All right, then I'll just do two. Ah, found one. <laughs> what makes you laugh the most? <laughs> Okay, probably, Uh what do they say, you tell God your plans or something, you laugh or or watch him laugh or something, Um, you know, I would say, and myself, really, you know what I mean, looking back on, you know, prior experiences and things, where I, you know, I thought I, you know, had life figured out or something like that and it's you know kind of comical but you know that helps you pivot as we talked about and um yeah all right so all right what's yours before i give you my next one what the next you, you oh for here. you yeah okay here's a good one what you got what is the last thing you've done that you were really proud of the last thing i did that i was so proud of myself i can say this i was a referee now when you do the when you ref you have to be the center you can be on the side or you can be on the center but i did the centering and i went through it and it was one of the loveliest things i've never done it before and i was proud of myself because i thought i wouldn't be able to do it and that made me feel great i knew you were going to say something about soccer and what you do out there (laughs) i was like come on soccer dad (laughs) you got something for us okay all right, I'm going to uh, give two things. What are the most two fun things to do near your home or around your state or your city? Two okay, things. yeah. So I would say um, going to see live music. We have some good concerts that come through. And even like locally, there's some good cover bands and things like that um, that play good music. Okay, in St. Louis. <laughs> and what's then, the other one? You got two. And what were you? You said something fun to do or just. Right. Something fun to do near your home or town, new in your town in St. Louis. Yeah, I would say there's some nice wineries that are within, you know, like a a one hour, two hours um, that a lot of people, um, if you're in Missouri, you know, you drive a little piece out and you find some nice wineries to hang out. I don't know. I don't know. They were known for that. I thought everything was in California. Wine was in California. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. I need to start reading more. Yeah, Augusta, and there's some parts of Illinois that have some wineries that, you know, that's just like a puddle jump away. So, yeah. So, let me tell you this weird story. I'm traveling to Kenya. Um, I get to the airport, and I find a book that has all the 52 states of the U.S., and it tells you what is good about each particular state when you want to travel. Now, where else would you get something like that? I do have it somewhere. Now, I think I need to go start reading reading on it and probably get some fun facts about about places. And if I ever travel, then I, I'd be more knowledgeable and stuff. And how many states were there, Simbaza? 52. 52. Is it 52 or 50? 52. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm a, I, I, listen, that's why I have a diaspora podcast. <laughs> I claim that. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm not. <laughs> I claim the the pod the podcast. Okay. The, the Afro podcast. That's why. 
Oh, I'm, I think I'm going to be in running for Diaspora Podcast of the Year. So, guys, um, we'll start voting pretty soon. What? For, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is news. We weren't aware APVA. of this. APVA. Okay. I don't want to win. Look, not that I don't want to win, but <laughs> just the fact that I get nominated is in itself great to have your name being called part of it. So. For sure, you know, and I, I get so much anxiety for applying for awards. Like, I, you know, I think there was only one <laughs> award that I applied for. And I did get a nomination that one time. So, um, yeah, we'll see how we, you know. Yeah, just and then put it up there and mention it. Right. But, I mean, I really feel like we may have some award-winning things, you know. So, oh, yeah. with the stories that we've been collecting, and we appreciate all the all the people who've come to the show because when they do come in and they give us their content, that makes us be. Not, can I use validated? No, no. We'll say it makes the the show have some type of uh, standing in the community of podcasts. There you and go. When we also go and solicit people out there and say, hey, you want to come on to our podcast? They look at it and say, okay, fine. What do you have? Because people do scroll. Um, I've had disappointments before when I go out there and say, you know, can you come to my podcast? Well, this was back then when I used to have like four episodes. People <laughs> go look at your podcast and ask you, how many, where's your, what's your reach? So now where okay. we're at and with the stories that are coming up, you do tend to have people who look at the the podcast go back and look at your community also and say okay for what these people are worth and what content they're producing it's worth coming to consider them as part of our group and give them an award to say you know what thank you for the work that you've done okay that's interesting you know you said what the, what is your reach you know this is an international global podcast <laughs> It's grassroots independent but we're global and no i'm proud of that though um and i don't i always say i don't need awards and all of that but you know it's you know shout us <laughs> shout us to the guy in guam who checks in on our podcast oh okay i was gonna say there's some germany's out there too <laughs> Wait a minute. I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> you know, you're talking about awards. You know, we have a friend that um, is the master yeah. of awards. <laughs> me now. Yeah. Shout out to Mr. Lawson. We'll probably, we'll probably, we'll probably have him come on to the show one time, too. He's, a lot he's been to. here, but, you know, he'll come. Hopefully, yeah, he'll come I'm back with you. Know. <laughs> Both of us. Okay. So we can so we can, uh, you know, we can uh, what do you call it? harass him. <laughs> yeah, we've great. already had some offers from our other C4 friends. I think we, Al, Mr. Al Pete, will be coming oh, along yeah. soon. And some other friends. You don't want to miss this one. You don't want to miss the one with Al. Yeah, that should be a good time. But no, I'm looking forward to that mindset, uh, Mr. Reggie Bysore, Um, I'm looking forward to that. So, Jen, uh, we're going to conclude today. But before you leave, I'd like you to tell me or tell the viewers where we can find your show, Work by Accident. And don't yes. say those socials. Let's go like all of them. Huh? Spotify, <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> So, um, the show is called Walk by Accident, okay. and um, you can find it on Apple, Spotify, including our website, which is walkbyaccident.net, and, oh my gosh, it's so many different um, platforms, even Pandora, here's um, Audible, you know, um, you said, don't say we're all podcasts can be found. SoundCloud, you know, we're out there. We're out there, friend. So um, YouTube and our, the audio episode will be available very soon. And you'll get notifications. 
once you um, follow us. So we would love to have you follow us um, out on the podcast platforms. All right. And I am Sambaza, host of the Sambaza podcast. And my people are always called Wasambazaji. And Wasambazaji, you can find me or you'll find me on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, all at, at Sambaza Podcast. Now, I'm also at iHeartRadio. Um, it's well, Spotify in general, Apple Podcasts, and the new Google, which turned into YouTube Podcasts. So we're everywhere. And thank you for supporting us at all time, Osama Zaji. So Definitely. Jen, close out. Definitely. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys for joining us today. We are uh, definitely um, <laughs> are very happy that we had so many viewers tuning in. Um, chat's quiet today, but that's all right. We see you. <laughs> we see you. Thank you for being present with us. And um, yeah, our heart is full. We appreciate you supporting the content. I definitely have more um, planned. And if you found something um, useful, we appreciate that. And you can share, tell a friend. And uh, information will be included in our show notes. So with that, we appreciate you and take care. At this time, we're going to go ahead and conclude the episode. We greatly appreciate you listening. We invite you to follow us on social media, on Instagram, it is Woke by Accident Podcast. On Twitter, it is Woke by. On Facebook, it is Woke by Accident Podcast. We also have the new website up, www.wokebyaccident.net. Please check us out and also follow us on all of your favorite streaming platforms. And please leave a review and share feedback. You can also reach out by Gmail, wokebyaccident at gmail.com. And every time you listen, we appreciate it so much. Thank you for listening and take care.